Steady. You've just lost a night out with the Ayatollah. <laughs> One left. <coughs> That's fine. That's a radio alarm. That's a lovely price. Come on, take you down. Thank you. Look at the prizes you're in there with, Bill. Don't forget Bully's prize. That's fine. Ooh, that's marvellous. Two gold watches, and they're beautiful watches. They really are. Ooh, it's the wrong side. I'm sorry, it's a tin of snuff. Sorry, Bill. <laughs> Oh, it was in as well. Never mind. You've done very well. You've really won some smashing prizes. Let's go through what you've won. You have won. Come on. Two gold watches, a radio alarm, a fridge freezer, and some kitchen items. Now, listen, the kitchen items really are very, very nice. They're not just a, 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 a knife and a, a spatula. They're nice items. You've won tonight. You know the money you've won. £20, which is absolutely safe. We'll give you that now. Put that in your pocket. And the money that Cliff got for you, £245, for, you, for the mentally handicapped, for the bus, that's safe. That'll be sent tomorrow. But we're going to ask you now if you'd like to consider a gamble. The stake in this gamble is the prizes you've won. Remember what you've won. Think carefully. And you can gamble that against tonight's star prize, which is behind Bully. And this is exactly what you've got to do for the gamble. You've got to score 101 or more with six darts. Three for Sharon and three for Bill. All right. Your stake is the prizes you've won, so it's all or nothing. Think very carefully. Now, you've, you've a couple of seconds left. Take your time. Think very carefully. You're going to keep the prizes. All right, ladies and gentlemen, they're going to keep the prizes. Yeah. Thanks very much indeed. Off you go. Give them a nice warm round of applause. Well, 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 decision time. How would you like to make a decision like that in about five seconds? I don't know. Sting in the tail time. We're going to bring that back the couple who were knocked out only about seven minutes ago. Let's welcome them back into the game now. John and Clive. Come on. <laughs> All the way from... Don't worry. Neither. Alvin, what have you won? £20. Pen. £20. Pounds. Now, listen, this is a difficult decision. <laughs> Do you want to gamble all that money <laughs> against tonight's star prize? And all you've got to get, you know now what you've got to get, 101 or more. And you've three darts apiece. I think we ought to confer. Are you yeah, going <laughs> to <laughs> confer? Well, no. go on, have a confer. Yeah, yes. I think we will. Gonna... <laughs> have you got your 20 quid with you? Well, no, I'm going to take this. Now, you get this back, of course, because this is your stake. You realise that, which will make all the difference to your night out. <laughs> All right. Yeah. The non-dart player first, so it's Clive first. Come and stand with me, John. Come on. 101 or more. Now, come on, we're all rooting for you. Come on, let's have a win tonight. 17. 4. And 18. That's fine. Take your darts out. Will you wait now? I'll call the score after each dart now. 39 you've scored. Now then, John. Let's call the score after each dart. Five. Five. Forty-nine. Think about what you need. Twenty. Sixty-nine. You've missed it again. Come and have a look at what you would have won. Come on, never mind that now. Come and have a look. Oh, dear, dear, it's a super speedboat. Oh, oh, yeah. A speedboat. Thanks for watching Bullseye. It's been lovely to have you with us. Good night. Have a good week. Bye bye. to the Aussie Outback. This was the last place then where Ray and Jenny were seen alive. Where if you dig deep enough... Duck's body. ..you'll discover buried secrets. He didn't fall down that shaft and die accidentally. It was foul play. He was, in fact, murdered. And small-town cover-ups. Do you think there are people out there 
you know what happened? I think so. Murder in the Goldfields starts tonight at 10 on Crime and Investigation. Why are you in London? I'm gonna put on a show at this theater. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Magic Mike. Magic Mike's Last Dance, available now. Keep an eye on the clock, the banking, and the host. You've got to multitask not to be the weakest link. Weeknights at 7 on Challenge. Bully, the cartoon bull, drops from an ensign, enters the premises where a darts contest is advertised. As people drink, he takes up a set of darts, takes aim and scores a bullseye. Ladies and gentlemen, will you welcome your host for the evening, Jim Bowen. Good evening. Welcome to show four of Bullseye. Well, we still haven't had a star prize go off it, but they're winning, they're winning quite a few shillings on the way. We'd like to welcome tonight, first of all, a super audience and yourselves at home to watch us on this lovely weekend. A nice warm welcome for the first couple tonight who are going to play with us on Bullseye. From London, John and Viv Brace. Nice to see you, John and Viv. Hi. You're looking lovely now. Because you. you've been here all day in the jeans. It's smashing to see you. Where are you from, John, did we say? Uh, Stevenage in Hertfordshire. That's right, you said, North London. What do you do for a living? Uh, I'm an instrument fitter for an aerospace company. We were saying that's a very precise sort of job. It is, yeah. Is he a very precise man at home? Is no, he? not at all. Is he untidy oh, and throws stuff about? Yeah, and I bet him work, it's all, what did you say earlier on? It's millions, isn't it? Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> so you take it out of home, do you? You throw your shirts yeah, about. I'll take it, just... it out of somebody. Yeah, <laughs> well, she's looking well on it. What about you, Viv? What do you do? I'm a punch operator. Punch operator? <laughs> When I they see. don't do their work, I go around punching them. I see. Oh, we're getting the gags as well now. Here, we're getting all the lots. <laughs> have, you any, have you any family? Yeah, we've got one little boy. Can I wave? Of course you can wave oh. on that one. Hello, Dean. There's Dean. <laughs> Get to bed. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's all right. He's allowed to be Sandy, up at this time. Sandy. He's all right. Yes, yeah. I'll tell you when. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been married, can we ask? Two years. Two years. Mm. Oh, well, what are you doing up at this time? <laughs> <laughs> nice to have you with us, Viv. Oh, she goes to your little seat. Thank and you. Good night, John. And the next couple tonight are going to play with us on Bullseye. <laughs> From Central, John Elmsley and Mike Wells. <laughs> You've been a bit of a character today. This is Jim Asney. How are you, Mike? Hello, hi. Tell us what you do, Jim, for a living. Uh, I work in the purchasing department of a telecoms firm. A telecoms firm? How's your darts? Not too bad. It's a bit out of character for a dance, not to be as slim as you, because you really are slim, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Dear yeah. me, you're like a modeler for a dipstick, really. You're very slim, aren't you? The envy of all those lads who are putting it on a bit, you see. What about you, Mike? Well made lad, what do you do? I'm a police inspector. A police inspector? Yes. In whereabouts? In Coventry. In Coventry. Yeah. Are they keeping you busy? Very, very busy, yes. Really? Yes. That may be a bit sad, eh? Well, not really, no. But we don't mind. It... We'd sooner be busy than absolutely quiet. Yeah, as long as you're keeping us all in order, that's, that's the main right. thing, isn't it? What about your dance, Jim? Where do you play? Uh, mainly in Coventry, you know, a couple of leagues during the night. You don't play for a pub, do you? Do you play for yeah, a particular Yeah, I play for pub? two different pubs. Well, yeah. well got, let's tell us what they are. Uh, the RAO Boy B, which is the Royal Antediluvian Order, Order of, of Buffaloes, Buffalo. yes. Uh, and the Old Goose from Bedworth. How's your general knowledge, Mike? Oh, well, not too bad. Is it you have to read a lot to become an inspector, really, don't you? Sometimes, yes. Yeah. Sometimes? Yeah. I see. Well, we better behave tonight because I do drive a lot on these roads. We better look after this fellow, don't we? Nice warm round of applause for these lads. Off you go, Mike. <laughs> Third couple tonight, so we're going to play with us on Bullseye. Come on, let's play. From Ulster, John Boyd Senior and John Boyd Junior. Young John and and not so young John. <laughs> not too much of the old. Not so much of the old. <laughs> lovely accent, that lovely warm Irish brogue, isn't it? Father and son, isn't it? Yes. How old, John? Seventeen. Seventeen. How long have you been playing darts? About four or five years. Have you really? Yes. Have you been drinking long? <laughs> This long, just... <laughs> <laughs> you brought him up well. You haven't brought him up on the on the black stuff, have you? On the really on the liffy water, have to. Have you really? Yeah. And you're both from you're from Belfast, aren't you? Northern Ireland. That's right. Yeah. What's the name of your pub you played out in, John? Well, there's two. There's the Austria United Services Club and the Grosvenor White Supporters Club. Great. I don't know. I, they probably understood that. I couldn't understand a word you said. <laughs> that, but anyway, the two places he's mentioned in there. That's smashing. What do you do for a living, John? I drive a brewery lorry. You drive a brewery? 
Hence the... Is that, that's why you've got that, is it? Yes, well, it slips just, you know. You, you breathe in and all yes, that. Yes, right. do, do you have the odd tipple when you drop? Occasionally, yes. Just now and again. Yeah, now and again. <laughs> well, it's nice to have you with us. Two lovely lads. John, off you go to your seat there. And young John, there you go. Smash it. Very nice. Right, you know about the game now. It involves a super dartboard. Come and have a look at this. Just to refresh your memories, bullseye dartboard, ten categories round the board, and in each category, some super bonus areas. 30, 50, 100 pounds, and if the dart player hits the bullseye there, he wins for himself 200 pounds! Oh. Oh. <laughs> now, the way you can win these bonuses is by hitting the subject asked for by his partner. If he hits the wrong subject, then, of course, he doesn't get a bonus. Once the subject's been hit, it drops out of the game. OK, just to refresh your memories. Right, let's get on with the game. Now, we've established the order of play before we came on the air tonight, and we're all sat there now. We've got Viv, Mike and John in the respective orders. The questions in the first round are worth £30 each. So we look at Viv, we ask her to look at the board and choose a subject for a partner. I'll try food, please. Food for Viv. Come on, then, young John. With one youngster. For food. Well, you didn't get the subject you wanted, you got words. So here's your question on words, and it's for £30. At a formal function, there is sometimes an MC. He is master of... Ceremonies. Is right for £30, so that's a good start for you. Well done, Bill. <laughs> now then, Mike, look at the board and choose a subject for Jim. And a question on food, please. On food. So we're still working for food. Jim to throw for food. He's got you a question on food and he's earned for himself a £100 bonus. <laughs> it's an excellent start for you, that, isn't it? This is food. From which country does Gruyere cheese come? From Spain. It's not from Spain in the audience? It's not. Switzerland. Never mind. Your dark playing partner did very well for you in the first round. Now then, John Senior. Look at the board for young John. What do you think? Sport, please. Sport. So it's John Junior. It's flashing to help you, John. <laughs> I haven't done it for you. He's hit food, which means we can't ask the question because the subject's gone. So no score there at the end of the first round. Viv and John with £30, Mike and Jim with £100, and the two Johns with none. Never mind, it's early days. The questions in the next round were £50, but we have lost two categories, and they are a little bit more difficult. So, Viv, look at the board, choose a category. Showbiz, please. Showbiz? Oh, are you into showbiz? Well, try to be. Try. <laughs> Come on, then, John. Showbiz. It's not. It's current affairs, so there's no bonus. But never mind, you could still get £50 if you get this question right, Viv. Who became Foreign Secretary when Lord Carrington resigned in April 1982? Pim. Is right. Well done for £50. Good girl. <laughs> All right, Mike, look at the board, choose a category. I have a question on sport, please. On sport. We're still trying for sport. Jim to throw for Mike's question. He's there with a £50 bonus. Well done, yes. Why not? And for £50, which is giving you a lovely start to the evening, in which very fast game is a puck used in place of a ball? Ice hockey. Is right. For 50, well done indeed. £50. Now then, John, what do you think? We'll try showbiz, please. Showbiz is there to be got. All right, young John, in for showbiz. He's there, he's got you a £50 bonus, so you're coming back on the rails. £50 question on showbiz, John. Which star plays the part of an ageing crook caught up with drug traffickers in the Louis Malley film called Atlantic City? It is fairly current. I don't know, I'm sorry. You've no idea. Anybody? Burt Lancaster. It was Burt Lancaster. It wasn't all that easy, was it? But it was, in fact, the £50 question. Never mind, we move on. At the end of round two, the scores. Viv and John with £80, Mike and Jim with £200, and the two Johns with £50. 
Now then, in the next round, it can all completely upend here because the questions are worth £100. OK? But with less categories, and they are that little bit more difficult. Look at the board. I'll try books, please. Books. All right. Books for John to try and find for it. And maybe a bonus. It's there. It's a £50 bonus. And here's your question on books for £100. Who wrote books set in the potteries around Stoke, which he called the Five Towns? No, I've no idea. No idea? No. It is for £100. Anybody? Arnold Bennett. Arnold Bennett it was, but it was for £100. So don't be too down about that. You're all right. Mike, look at the board. I'll take a question on Britain, please. On Britain? Well, on Great Britain as we now know it. £50 bonus you've got before you even get the question. And here's the question for a further £100. Which English county, as a policeman, you should really walk this, which English county is bounded by Kent, Surrey, Hampshire and the sea? Sussex. Is right for £100. <laughs> so with an incredible £350 at the end of that round, Mike and Jim are safe and sound. The two Johns, with £50 to your credit, just to remind you the bull is worth £200, we bring young John to the board. What do you think, John? Places, please. Places. And places is there to be for the taking. And the questions are worth £100, so you're still in with a chance. He's got you a £50 bonus. If you get this question right, you're there. This is places, £100. In which English county is there a little railway line known as the Bluebell Line? Devon. It's not Devon, it's Sussex. And it's from Sheffield Park to Horstead Keynes. But it was for £100. So at the end of that round, gives us the scores. Viv and John with £130. Mike and Jim with £350. And sadly, the two Johns all the way from Belfast with £100 have got to say cheerio to them. Give them a nice warm round of applause as you think for the The two Johns join Jim at the podium. We've got these super bullseye darts and a bullseye pen. That last one, it was Thank a bit, uh, wasn't it? Well, a bit difficult. Anyway. <laughs> no, never mind for you. It's been super having you with us. There's your hundred pounds. Take that with our compliments. It's been a privilege having you with us. The first couple from Belfast we've had on the show. They really have been marvellous lads. Give them a nice round of applause as they go off. <laughs> 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 now we come to round two of the game, and here we've got that mystery voice, which is a mystery no longer. It's that of our Tony Green, who does the scoring with me in this part of the game. And in this section, we use, of course, the traditional match play dartboard. OK, here we ask the two dart players now to compete in three rounds of darts against each other, and the highest scorer wins a question for his partner. And the value of that question is the winning score in pounds. So it's pounds for points. OK. All right, lads, pounds for points. As many as you can get for your partner, see if you can win some money. In you go, and it's John to go first. And as we play this game, it's over to young Tony Green. John, then, first round. Single one. Another one. Single five, just seven. Very unlucky. Jim, very easy task. Seven to beat. It's 20. Another 20. And another 20. 60. First round to Jim. So it's seven players 60. So for 60 pounds. For 60 pounds, Mike. What do the initials TGWU stand for? Transport and General Workers Union. It's right. For 60 pounds. Which uh, gives you a score of £410 as we move into round two. Once again, John throwing first. It's 20. Another 20. And that's double one, so that's 42 for John. That 
that's 30. Second round to John on 42. Right. All right, Viv, 42 pounds. What is the modern name for the country once known as Persia? Pakistan. Oh. Wasn't, so we can ask... Shh, don't shout it out, boys and girls. We can ask Mike. And you scored 30, Mike, or Jim scored 30 for you. So for another 30 pounds, what's the modern name for the country once known as Persia? I can't recall it. Can't recall it. What about the audience? Iran. It was Iran, wasn't it? Never mind, no scores. We're moving to round three. Final round. John to throw. Unlucky. It's five. And 20, so it's 25 for John. Jim, Jim, just 25 to beat. It's treble 20. Another treble 20. That's 140 for John. Press is on you, Mike, now for £140. What is the difference between prone and supine? A prone is... To me, when a body is lying in a very comfortable position, face downwards. Supine? And supine is when it's lying on its back, face upwards. For £140. <laughs> Well, tremendous. So that gives Viv and John £130, and Mike and Jim are obviously through to the next round, £550. Come on, Viv and John. Come on. Marvellous. Come on, let's have a Well, you really have been... Have you had a bit of a good day with us? Hasn't it? Yeah. It's been super having you, honestly. We're having some marvellous contestants this series. You've done very well. You've got two bullseye tankards, and they're really crystal, and they're cut glass, and bullies on the front there. The bullseye darts and the pen, and of course, 130 pounds. We'll see you in a couple of throws. One million. Lady million. Fragrances by Raban. Stop. Sure, you want to lick the creamy yoghurt from every last inch of lid, but you can't. What will the kids think? Perhaps they'll draw pictures of me and show their parents. <gasps> <sighs> Miller, love every bit. What the...? Doc. at Gala Bingo for a chance to win a share of 50k. Gala Bingo, where a little joy goes a long way. Come on, Santa! <laughs> Toys are gonna need them too. <laughs> this Christmas, shoes Duracell. It's that time of year again where everyone knows that anything goes. Sprouts on everything, everything. Unwrap wraps while you wrap. The rules are there are no rules. There's no method to your gravy madness. So Cantonese your Christmas Eve. Give Santa what he really wants. It's taco time! And when you're over leftovers, call in the ramen. Anything goes at Christmas. From big brands to local favorites, it's all on your doorstep with Deliveroo. Whoosh. 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 Tesco whoosh. Delivery from as little as 20 minutes. 
because going to the shops isn't everyone's bag. Whatever you do, we do breakfast. Kellogg's. Good Girl, The Feminine Fragrance, Carolina Herrera. The British Empire. For some, its former glory has been called into question. But is it really a legacy of bloody conquest and exploitation? You've done something wrong, go in the hole. People just don't want to go there. This is intense. Join me, Al Murray. And me. Quickly, quickly. As we journey to find out. Can we get out now? Why does everyone hate the British Empire? Available now. Welcome back to part two of Bullseye. I never thought dark players were good looking until I met the next one. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome the talents of Maureen Flowers. Blonde haired Maureen joins Jim. It's lovely to see you again. It's a long time since we saw you, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's... Can yes. you remember what you did last time when we came and we did the charity, you know, the 301? Can you yes. remember what you scored? I think it was uh, 260. <laughs> 20. 20. 20. Oh. 260. Oh. Are you going to do better than that tonight? I'll try. I you hope did, so. You it's did hard. better than that Eric Bristol last time, didn't you? Yes, he was he terrible. Was, wasn't I thought he was extremely disappointing. <laughs> I did. Yes. We'll see if we can do better again tonight because okay. Eric really did well last week for us. Yes, he did. Didn't do well. he? Did mm. all right. Take some beating. You do it tonight. We'll show you. We will. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Maureen Flowers going to throw for us the charity. Thank you. Thanks, Maureen, the number one lady player in the world. Level seven, that's 42. So a steady start for Maury. Oh, that's unlucky. That's trouble one. 23, but very unlucky there. Maureen picks up her fallen dart. So Maureen with 65. That's trouble 20. Single 20. And a single 20, 100, 165 pounds. When you've only got nine darts and you've got to do it instantly, it's yes. hard. But you've got some money for a charity, and it's a very worthy charity. The two finalists told us about it earlier today. Will you welcome on stage our two lads who are through to the finals? Come on, boys, and tell us about the charity. They're going to applaud you in a minute. They will applaud you in a minute. Well, there you are. Tell us about the charity, Mike, because I know you're well into this. Well, our charity concerns the muscular disease of uh, the body, particularly in the younger people, yeah. uh, for which we do a lot of work throughout the year. This is not the police force. This is a private thing that you... To totally away from our totally normal employment. From this, yeah. is, this is in our own time. That's okay. excellent. Well, that's another £165 to your charity, earned for you by the lovely Maureen Flowers. Thank you very okay. much indeed, Maureen. Thank you. Lovely Maureen Flowers. <laughs> Well, you've, uh, you've had an incredible night with us, haven't you? £550, you've got whatever happens now. We're going to show you a board now. I say it to every couple at this stage in the game. You'll never forget this board for the rest of your lives because it's the, it's the bullseye prize board. Come and have a look at it and you'll see what I mean. Now, in this part of the game, I've, I have to tell you this, it's a test of memory as well as skill. There's the board with black sections and red sections. Now, in every red section, there really are some lovely prizes to be won. In one, for those rainy wash days, a tumble dryer, which takes a six-pound load. 
In two, a ladies and gentlemen's nine carat gold wristwatch with black leather straps. In three, for the children, a large cuddly brown bear that can be hand washed. In four, a portable six inch color TV radio cassette that can be used either with batteries or mains. In five, a multi-purpose tabletop cooker with crock insert which can braise, stew, casserole and fry. In six, a button back upholstered mahogany telephone table seat with drawer for directories. In seven, portable barbecue in a redwood trolley, which incorporates ample work surface and storage space. In eight, a lead crystal whiskey decanter and six glasses on a silver-plated gallery serving tray. And Bully's prize is the very latest in computer-controlled hi-fi stereo that plays both sides of the record automatically, together with a tape deck and three-band radio. How about that? Now think on this, boys. Nine lovely prizes, and we're giving you nine darts. Six for Jim and three for Mike. So it's possible for you to win the lot. Now on the board, a little poem. Keep out of the blacks and in the red. In this game, you get nothing for two in a bed. So if you get a red, a red segment and you hit it again, you lose the prize. All we want you to do is get one dart in each red sector. OK? So it's off you go first, Jim. First three darts, and it's over to Tony. Jim, then. First throw. That's red, number five. That's a telephone table and a telephone. That's black. And another black. Very, very near, very unlucky. Now, Mike, that's black, very near. Another black. And another black. You've still three darts left and you've got one prize, so you're OK. You can still come out with four prizes. Jim, then, just three to go. That's red, eight. That's a decanter with the glasses, lovely prize. That's in the black. That's red, number one. And that's a tumble dryer, so that's a lovely prize for you to finish the evening with. Well done. Well done. You've really done OK there. You've won a tumble dryer, a telephone table and a telephone, and, of course, you've won the decanters with the glasses. Now, we're going to ask you to con consider a gamble. The three prizes that you've won there, there on the board, to gamble those against tonight's star prize, which is hiding behind Bully. All we want you to do is throw 101 or more Six darts, three apiece. Consider the gamble, and the time you've got is the time it takes that board to revolve. Think about it. What do you think, boys and girls? Do you want to help them? Should they gamble? Yes. Are they going to gamble? Are they going to gamble? They're not too sure about it. What do you think? You decide. Have to gamble. You're definitely going to gamble. All right. <laughs> yes. So it's 101 or more. Mike to throw first, and Jim's going to come and stand over here with me. Over to Tony. Mike then moving in. His first three darts. Single 20. Single 18. Another 18. That's 56. <laughs> so Jim just needing 45 for the star prize. Single 20. Another 20. Yes, the star player! Oh, 